And today in the hot seat, we have Gabriel Faraga, author of Letters from the Attic, The Empress Holds the Key, the upcoming The Disappearance of Anna Popov, and next year, The Hidden Genes of Professor K. Good morning, Gabriel. Thank you oh, for joining good morning, us. Jenny. It's a pleasure to be here. It's great to have you. Now, The Empress Holds the Key, that was your first fiction novel, and it's a mighty time. It really is. Um, is that your first book? It is the first book. It is the yes. first book. And when did you start writing it? Well, that took me 10 years. It took 10 years to write? Yes, it took 10 years to write, but I uh, must explain that at the time I started, I was still practicing law full time. Yep. And it has only been possible for me to become a full time writer for the last five years. Right. And it was during that time that I focused on finishing and developing this book and then finally bring it to publication, which happened last December. Right. So, yes. It took about 10 years. It took about 10 years. Now, is, is that the research? I mean, was it the research that took 10 years or the actual writing or the ideas? All of the above. All of it, yeah. To write fiction on this scale mm -hmm. is totally different from writing the things that I was used to, right. mainly legal texts and research in that regard. So it took a long time to switch into the frame of mind yeah. to be able to write creatively. Because you have to let go, don't you? You have to let go. Yeah. You have to let your ideas develop yeah. and you have to be able to put them down on paper. Yeah. So it was a big learning curve, mm -hmm. as you can understand. The research too has taken a long time as I like to visit all the places mentioned in my books. I travel to all the places and uh, for authenticity the research is very important. Mm -hmm. It is a big book, as you said. Yeah. It has a lot of uh, historic material, but I must say it was a delight to research and to write. That's good. And it's a delight to read, too. Um, so it took 10 years to, to write. So you were writing while you were still working. Yes. How on earth did you have the mental energy? I mean, law is not, it's not an easy thing to do all day. So you come home at night and then write fiction? Yes. It was recreation. It was something different to do. Right. So I enjoyed that. Yeah. And uh, yes, so it was, it was late at night. Yeah. It was fun. And quite frankly, I'm glad you mentioned this word fun. Unless you really enjoy this task, yeah. you can't be a serious writer. No. It is a very solitary mm -hmm. walk of life. Yep. It takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And unless you are very focused, disciplined, and you enjoy it, mm. you really cannot do this successfully. No, that's true. Now, solitary, that's, that's um, something that I, I find interesting. Different writers, you write, you lock yourself away when you write? Well, uh, I've been asked by my readers, mm -hmm. where do you write? Mm -hmm. How does it all happen? Well, allow me to tell you. I literally write in my attic. The proverbial attic. The proverbial attic. Mm -hmm. oh, I am fortunate. And it's a real one. Yes, yes, it is a real one. Exposed beams. It's the classic sort of attic that you uh, imagine. Mm -hmm. That is my writing space. Yeah. That's where I retreat mm -hmm. and that's where I write. Mm -hmm. And is there a time of day? Do you have a routine? I mean, some writers get up at five in the morning and they do two hours before breakfast. Do you have I a... do have a, a routine. Yeah. I write late at night. Okay. When everything is quiet. Mm -hmm. I go into my attic. And, what and do you, that is when I write. What do you call late at night? I would say I'd start at about uh, 10 o'clock at night. Really? And I go through about to about 3 o'clock in the morning. So what time do you go to bed? After that. And what time do you get up in the morning? Well, I don't need much sleep. I get up usually between 7 and 8. Wow. <laughs> I would love to get by on four hours a night. <laughs> I hasten to add, Jenny, it's not every night. Not every night. But it is a routine. Yeah. And then in the morning, just to complete the picture, I review what has been written the night before. Mm -hmm. And during the day, when I do other things, I uh, think about the plot, the characters, the dialogue, and how it was going to so develop. It swirls around. And during the day, you formulate your ideas. Yeah. At night, I put them down on paper. Mm -hmm. I then write them. Mm -hmm. and in the morning, I review. Right. And on it goes. And on it goes. That's the process. So wait, you say you put them down on paper, so you make notes and then you type them up? No. Uh, when I said put them down on paper, I, I uh, use computers yeah. for everything. So I you don't... do your own typing? Yes, everything. Yeah, I've done my own typing for yeah. many, many years. Correct. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, Gabriel, look, thank you for joining us today. It's been, it's been great to absolute hear. Absolute pleasure. To hear. Good. Always enjoy talking to you. Good. You know. Likewise. Um, enjoy your research trip to thank Europe, you. the European summer. I would be lying if I said I wasn't jealous. Right. So um, <laughs> enjoy it very much, and we'll look forward to the release of Anna Popov in November this year, November 2014. Correct. And, um, and hope to see you back here in the hot seat next year. Um, prior to the release of The Hidden Genes of Professor Kane. Jenny, it's been a pleasure talking to you as always. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Gabriel.